I'm Archon, the Cruel, the Red, Dragonborn, Oathbreaker Paladin, and Worshipper of Tiamat. I am old school. I started playing with the Red Basic set. This is like not just a funny t-shirt, this is actually like OG, that's where I started. It's very rock and roll. <laughs> it's just my life. <laughs> Archon, your research has brought you months of frustration until you crossed paths with a knowing monk of the Cobalt Reserve named Duan. This gave you the name of the cavern that bears your mark, the Vault of Shumas. Knowing rumor of the dangers within, you've hired a small band of mercenaries to accompany you into the depths of this vault. I am the headmistress, a level five human monk. I'm Percival Frederick Stein von Musil-Kolowski, the role of the third, the human gunslinger. Hi, I'm Keyleth of the Arashari. The name's Dupont Dupont, Dwarven Rogue. If there's coin to be had, I'll be there. You might know me as Mr. Steal Your Girl, but you should know me as Mr. Cut Your Purse. Before you is the great stone, sand-covered door of the vault. There is no visible mechanism to open it. Do you have any idea, or have you done research before you brought us here? I don't read so much. Oh. No, uh, <clears throat> yeah, what do I know about this place? Nobody really knows what resides within, and the only thing that's drawn you to this location are the visions you've had. But as to the actual nature of the interior, you're kind of in the same place as the rest of your party. Anybody else good at history? Well, this seems to be my area of expertise. Being a rogue, I'm going to see if there's some sort of hidden mechanism. All right, go ahead, roll an investigation <laughs> check. A big ten. You brush away some of the sand on the door, revealing a faint, detailed design carved across the entirety of its surface. It resembles a mass of snakes knotting themselves together. Deep within the center of this mass is a single human face, and his mouth seems to be a small porthole of some kind, about four inches across. It's a screaming snake face with a fist hole. This, is a, <laughs> this has got a very dangerous sort of Goonies vibe to it. DuPont, you should put your fist inside and see what happens. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it detect traps, anything, no? <laughs> before, before, I mean, look, I just right. read you, so. <laughs> There's not that much emotionally invested for me. I'm just trying to help you out. You, look, you're, you're paying the bills here. You hired us. I'll, I'll detect for traps. Put your fist in the hole. <laughs> Go ahead and make an investigation oh, check. No. Boy. Oh, jeez, <laughs> you guys. High roller over here, uh, looking at a big old seven. I just started shaking my head. You find that there's a singular iron rod, maybe an inch in width. I'd like to pull. All right. A series of small needles suddenly protrude and impale your hand on the inside of this oh, opening. Oh, betrayed! You take eight points of poison damage. Oh no. As you withdraw your hand as the needles retract, you guys hear the door suddenly shift and begin to open as it lifts its way across the mountain surface, revealing a darkened passage. <laughs> as you feel it begin to course through your system, you are currently poisoned. I grab his hand and I use five points from my pool to stop the the poison. You watch as uh, as the large red-scaled dragonborn casually strolls over <laughs> in his armor as a sudden burst of divine warm energy kind of glows from his claw. These multitudes of tiny divine dragon mouths actually draw the venom out of your bloodstream and spit it onto the sand below before the energy dissipates. Oh, paladin. Oh, hey. oh look at that. What you now see, a wide stone about five foot in uh, diameter appears to be set into the central ceiling portion of this chamber uh, with three obelisks about eight feet tall. You hear a sudden uh, You all glance around and you watch each of these obelisks uh, fall inward, slamming onto the ground, sending a cloud of dust swirling around you. A series of humanoid figures step, one out of each of these three obelisks. Burly and covered in tattoos, thick dark skin, muscular, and where the head would be, one large serpentine snake head. <laughs> They immediately draw these scimitar-like blades from their side. Uh, at the very top of the round, Dupont, you were the first to react. What are you doing? I'd like to pull my crossbow and shoot the snake man in the face. Go for <laughs> it, <laughs> guy. That's a 10. And as you go to fire, your hand shakes ever so slightly in the crossbow, <laughs> fires wide. You see it splinter against one of the nearby pillars, unaffected. Blast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that brings us to Keyleth. I want to cast fairy fire over where the snake creature is. You have a cube that shoots fairy fire? Yeah, it's, it's like the Tesseract, but <laughs> sparkle bomb. Dexterity saving throw for both. What's your spell, DC? Oh, oh 16. 16. Nope. 
And no, they both fail their dexterity saving throws. You see bright purple light emit from them, making them both shining targets for anybody that wishes to strike them. So all attacks against them have advantage. This one rushes past. Uh, you do get an attack of opportunity if you want to punch the one that's rushing. Yeah, away first. I'll, I'll take that. Punch him! For an attack. Punch him. Oh, gosh, one. Plus four, though. That actually Does kills that, that one. Yeah. As, as, it, as, it, as it goes rushing towards Dupont, you watch as it darts off. You spin around and clock it in the back of the head with a back fist. As you do, you watch it just go unconscious and go face down to the ground, skidding into the dust. Percival. All right, leave the head on one of them. I'm going to want to dissect it later, and I'm going to take two shots at the heart of the big of the big creature. Go ahead and roll damage for the first strike. Uh, that's 12 points for the first hit. Uh, 14 points for the other one. You watch as the gunfire <laughs> echoes loudly, causing this burst of fire and smoke at the loud. front of the barrel. You're <laughs> you see the blood splooge out of both parts of the impact. <laughs> I'm, that's what I saw. <laughs> it's a descriptive term. I'm going to suddenly realize that I'm very tiny. I'm going to slowly start backing up. That ends your go. It is now the snake creature's turn. It marks its way around. Uh, and actually seeing you as the most dangerous entity in the room goes heading in your direction, Archon. I'm flattered. <laughs> that is... Nine points of piercing damage and seven points of poison damage as the fangs dig into the side of your scales and you feel it pulse through your blood system. That was officially pissed me off, and I'd like the Hellish Rebuke. Yeah. <laughs> Love Hellish Rebuke. Love the Hellish yeah. Rebuke. So good. Yeah. <laughs> you just fucked with the wrong Stop. guy. <laughs> yeah. We can say fuck on the internet, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay, great. That's going to be 12 points of fire points. damage. Now it's my turn. As it rushes okay. up, you, you you throw your hand out in front and watch as flames suddenly burst around its body. It lands right in front of you, you know, pulls back to go for another strike. What are you doing? I'm going to swing Bone Cleaver, my battle axe. Go for it. 25 points of damage. 20. Wow. Jesus. Uh, as you arc Gross. down with your Bone Cleaver axe, you hear it scree screech out into the cavern air. <laughs> as you bisect it in half Ooh. or so, and it sh slumps to the ground, no longer moving. Yes! <gasps> yes! What's part of it? Yes! <laughs> <laughs>